between Airbus and Boeing? We took both, uh, quite frankly. And look, it's, uh, when you operate an airline, you've got two choices, primarily Boeing and Airbus. So it's about range of aircraft. It's what aircraft fits the mission. So certainly when we looked at our order, we took the 320 for short haul. Um, the 320 is a, it's a great aircraft. Uh, it's, it's a good aircraft for um, the Gulf during the day and for overnight into India. We also use the um, 320, 319 aircraft even uh, as far as Moscow. The 777s in two class, um, we fly down into Southeast Asia. We also fly them up into uh, Canada, Toronto. Um, very efficient aircraft, good for passenger and good for cargo. Our 330s and 3 class, we fly predominantly in the Middle East mm -hmm. and into Europe. And our 340, 500 and 600s, uh, we fly down to Australia and up to New York and Chicago. Now the next generation of aircraft is quite exciting. You know, we take delivery of 380s in 2014. We'll only have 10 380s mm -hmm. and you'll see, see them coming flying out of um, Bangkok. We also have ordered 35 787s. Um, which is going to be a great aircraft, you know, a composite, uh, fuel efficient, uh, whether it be from a uh, flight deck or from an engineering perspective. Um, the, the, the design is, is, is outstanding. We've also selected the 350s which come out in 2017, 2020. And you know those aircraft we've picked for a mission, and we'll deploy them accordingly. So, our fleet today works out about 45% Boeing, and 55% uh, Airbus. You know when it peaks at 2017. Listening to you, I think Abu Dhabi is more or less modeling itself, um, like Singapore, building attractions in the city itself, oh, absolutely. trying to get people to come, I having its own yeah. airlines, a good airline. Singapore have done a great job. What a, what a great role model. And uh, yes, you know, if someone's done something successfully, um, why not look at it, replicate where it makes sense, but also be innovative where you wish to be. You know, Abu Dhabi is a, uh, it's, it's an Arab capital that has a very um, strong um, flow of respect and hospitality through its, uh, through the way it positions itself as a destination, but it's also an international city. Um, you know, our company with 100, over 100 different nationalities is a, is a reflection of the type of organisations that are, are, are building in the Gulf. So, you know, to me, um, looking at what people have done well, looking at how you can uh, take that model, do it better, why not? Just don't take it, 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 the areas that haven't worked, maybe leave those behind. James, you're in the travel industry for like 30, 40 years, most of your life in this business. What's so sexy about it? <laughs> well, look, I guess I've been fortunate that I've um, worked in airlines, I've worked in car rental, and I've worked in hotels I, uh, from Australia, throughout Asia Pacific, into Europe, and now back into the Middle East. It's about people. It's people like you. It's dealing with people. Uh, every day is different. It's about um, people's aspirations. It's about uh, emotions. It's about can do and it's about people doing what you just did, smiling and saying thank you and uh, whether it be the people that work for you or whether it be your customers, it's a very dynamic industry and every day is different and I think that's why all of us work in this business, every day is different. Mm -hmm. But you travel a lot too, isn't that tiring sometimes? <laughs> I'm fortunate I work for one of the best airlines in the world, so it's got a great first class product, great cabin, mm -hmm. great bed, great crew. No, part of, the, part of running a business, a global business, is that you have to be accessible. Um, you know, we deal with governments, we have to negotiate bilaterals, we deal with bankers when we finance aircraft. You can't expect people to come to you. And, you know, one of the important reasons to be here in, in Bangkok is to meet our partners, uh, to meet our customers, to meet our staff. And, you know, when you run a global corporation, uh, it's important that you are visible to your people, you're understanding the issues, you're meeting your customers and also taking time to meet partners, whether it be financial, whether it be manufacturing, whether it be um, you know, any other form of um, 
um, sector where you may have an association. Mm -hmm. As CEO of Etihad, do you fly other airlines? It's okay, you can tell me. Yeah, I do. I do. It's always good to see what the other guys are up to. Um, yeah, I probably fly four or five other airlines throughout the course of 12 months and it's good to watch, to see what they do. Um, and sometimes when we see things they do better, we go back home and uh, do a bit of fine tuning ourselves. But you know, we're in our own space, you know, to start an airline with a clean sheet of paper is unique. You know, it won't um, come again in my career and it won't come with most of my executives. But uh, we're not a legacy carrier. You know, when people say, well, you come from, you know, a, a, a gold state, it doesn't matter. Well, quite frankly, it does matter. Because people who have been successful, who have resources and money, mm -hmm. don't throw good money after bad. But my secret weapon is that I am brand new. That I am moulding a business without culture. I don't have unions but I still have to pay people properly. Otherwise, they won't bring their families to Abu Dhabi and work within this airline. What we're bringing, building is a, uh, is a new business. We're outsourcing where it's not core. We're taking advantage of technology. We're looking at digital strategies. We're looking at social media. There are no rules in our airline except the customer. So in everything we do, Every morning when we start, it's about the customer. What happened in the last 24 hours? What happened with the operation? Were we impacted with any delays? Mm -hmm. Were there any major issues? You know, running a safe airline is a given. But how do we ensure that our customer feels different so they come back? And let me give you an example of that. When we had the volcano in Europe, we had also the challenges here in Thailand at the same time. And we took the decision to fly all our customers into Abu Dhabi and accommodate them at our expense. Wow. So when Europe opened up, we could get people home. Mm -hmm. And we cleared the backlog in 36 hours. And the reaction we got from our customers, because it was better to bring the people into the hub mm -hmm. than leave them at Bangkok Airport or Sydney Airport or another airport. And they sleep on the floor. Indeed. You know, when people got kids, when you've got people that need to get back to work, when you've got elderly people, it's back to what I said earlier, respect. Mm -hmm. Respect for the customer. They've got a problem, let's help them. Because next time, they'll travel again. Next time, they'll tell 10 more people that this airline was great, which is better than telling 10 people this airline is terrible. So that focus on finding service solutions, that's what that clean sheet of paper gives us. You know, not many airlines take steps such as that. So mouth-to-mouth -mouth advertising is still the best tool right? oh, yeah. to promote an airline Look, or anything. Anything, you know, whether you go into a store and, and, and buy a suit yeah. or, you know, you, you buy slacks, if that, in my opinion, if the shop assistant doesn't give you great service, why do you give them your money? You go to the next shop. Same with us. Same with us. And the consumer does have a choice, obviously price frequency, you know, the seat, in-flight entertainment, but you get one shot too. If you travel with us and you have a great journey, you'll come again. But the first time you travel with us, you don't have a good journey, you won't. And it's as simple as that. So that focus on the customer. When I meet the cabin crew in their graduation, I have a number of messages for them. The first one is don't forget your safety training. The second one is have fun. Have fun with them. Have fun with the customers. But don't get in the gully talking, be in the cabin. Be visible, look after our customers. When you get to a place like Bangkok, enjoy your time on the stopover. Enjoy the city, enjoy the hotel. But when you're back on the aircraft, look after our customers, because our customers pay our salaries. Our customers pay in the development of our airline. It doesn't matter where our customers come from. They can come from anywhere in the world, may not speak, well, understand, treat them with respect, and they'll come back. Thank you very much, James, for your time today. Thank you. Thank Love you. to meet you. Competition in the airline industry is certainly beneficial for us consumers because we have more choices to choose from. As for Etihad Airways, James told me that he will continue to improve on the quality of Etihad so that it will be one of the very best quality airline. See you next time. Sawadee ka.